Andre Battles with I Battle Daily Ministries. Who am I and what am I to God? Very deep question and I know a lot of you are trying to figure this question out. Someone out there is saying right now, I've always been the kind of person to run away from conviction. I can never face myself. I can never look in the mirror and be satisfied with who I am. Someone else out there is saying, I know God had a calling for me. But I'm so messed up. I've done drugs. I've had illicit sex. I've done all these other things. God doesn't want to use me. God doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. Hmm. Is that you out there? I want you to tune in for the next few moments. And find out who you are and what you are to God. Well, hello once again. Uh, before we begin, most of your faces here are familiar. Uh, most of you do know me, but for those of you that do not, I'll just give you a short, uh, a short introduction to me. Uh, again, Andre Battles. Uh, I'm 27 years old. I've lived here in Shreveport for about three years. I met my wife, Cindy Battles, that just sang, and thank you for special music. I met her three years ago at a church gathering. So young people, listen up. That's a good place to meet your next spouse uh, at church. Anyway, uh, God has been good to me in my life. Uh, I can't complain. Uh, you know, if, if God were to do to me what I deserved, then you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be standing here. Come on now. But God is good. Uh, God is very good and, and he's been good to me. I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I've done a lot of things wrong. Still doing some things wrong. I'm not perfect. But I strive to be perfect because that was Christ has asked us to do. He said in his word, be ye perfect as my father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And so that means if Christ says we can do it, we can. Yes. We just have to believe and, and make our faith into works through faith and believing in it. And so anyway, God is good. I'm glad that you're here. Let's have one more word of prayer before we begin. Our father in heaven, we just ask for your presence here tonight. I am no one and I am nothing. The only thing that I can say that I truly am is a sinner. And so, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will come over me and that you will speak through me for the purpose of some person's heart here tonight, whether they're young or old, to receive you and to come away here tonight with something that they can take back home and use in their day to day life. This is our prayer. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters. Who am I and what am I to God is the question tonight. Who am I and what am I to God? Like I said, the theme for this weekend is committed to a true sense of honor. And so in order to become committed, just like that soldier that enlists in the army, he has to know what his objectives are. He has to know, hey, look, if before I go and sign up, what is it that they're going to expect from me? as a soldier. So he has to know himself. He has to know for sure that this is something that he wants to do. Because if he's, if he's not sure and he goes and enlists, then most naturally he would fall out within a few weeks or a few months of him enrolling. And so we need to know who we are and what we are to God. Now, could this be you? Jason, uh, I want to meet with you after class, please. Okay, Mr. Peters. Jason, what happened to you, man? Uh, what happened to your eye? Well, uh, Mr. Peters, you know, I, I had nothing. It's, it's really nothing. Man, uh, to be nothing, that really looks like something. What happened to you, uh, Jason? No, really, it's nothing. I mean, you know, just me and my sister were playing, and, you know, she got in a lucky punch. That was all. Wow, you, your sister must be a boxer, Jason, because that's a pretty bad bruise. Well, uh, trust me, it's nothing. Just leave it alone, uh, teach. Okay, Jason, I'll let it go. Then all of a sudden, Jason goes home. And when he gets home, he meets his dad at the door. Jason, didn't I tell you to take out the trash before you went to school? Yes, dad. Then why didn't you take the trash out? Well, I mean, the trash wasn't full before I left for school. So I'd be wasting the trash bag. Look, I told you, before you go to school, take out the trash. And all of a sudden, a fight ensues, and Jason receives another black eye from his dad. Abuse. 
You know, abuse is very real right now, and the pain is real. You know what? Over three million individuals, young people and some older people, are going to bed tonight crying because they've been abused today. Over three million people. Now, that's, like I said, it's not just young people either. And some of you here, as a matter of fact, have been abused as a child. And sometimes, even now, have been abused even as you're an adult. And abuse is not always a physical, a physical thing, excuse me. Abuse doesn't always have to be somebody striking you with their fist, or kicking you, or slapping you. Abuse can be verbal. As a matter of fact, the most strenuous abuse on a verbal person abuse, is verbal. because like the phrase says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. We know that that's a lie. Because really, if someone hits me and breaks my bones, after about six weeks, it's healed. But if you were to abuse me emotionally, man, sometimes that takes years to heal. I'm, honestly, and I know that some of us here can relate to that. You know, when it, when it comes to abuse, it not, not only does it start in the home a lot of times, but even if it does not start in the home, it can cause family problems. It can cause mother to be against daughter. It can cause daughter to be against father, father to be against his son. Abuse is real, and it can cause pain. It can cause suffering. And think about it. Whenever the pain is real or whenever the pain is present because of abuse, it can lead to an alternative lifestyle. What do I mean? Alternative lifestyles such as drinking. Some people here can relate, maybe not. You may have friends. There's a result of abuse, they turn to drinking alcohol. And they're still alcoholics today, 10, 15, 20 years later. Some of you here may have been there. You can relate. Another thing that happens a lot of times as a result, or an alternative as a result of abuse, is drug abuse, smoking, people taking different types of drugs. And I'm not just talking about alcohol. In my opinion, alcohol is the number one drug because it's illegal and society uh, does not frown on it. They accept it. So to me, that's the most dangerous form of drugs. But there's, another, there's other forms of drugs that are just as harmful that people take that do damage to them physically and emotionally. And like I said, one of those triggers is abuse. A lot of times, you know, we, we, we go to drugs and, and alcohol and different things because of abuse. But then again, there's some of you here that are saying, you know what, that's not me. Life has been good for me. My parents never abused me. They never talked down on me. My friends never had a problem with me. I'm good. And for you, you know, you're saying, hey, I'm smiling every day. Things are good. Things are great. I feel good. But yet, at the same time, you're saying to yourself, because everything is good, I'm going to pursue certain things. Like, for example, some of us want to be on that Forbes list, like Mr. Bill Gates. He's a guy that's worth $50 billion. Can you imagine $50 billion? I could take a dollar bill and lay one in front of each other and, it, and in front of each other and in front of each other, and it would circle this globe about eight times. That's how much $50 billion is. That guy is loaded. Or some of you might want to say, or some of you say, I want to be like this other individual on the Forbes list, Oprah Winfrey. And she's worth about $2.7 billion. And that's still a lot of money. It's not $50 billion, but when you're in the billions, it doesn't really matter much. You know, it's still a lot of zeros behind it. So think about that. Some of you are saying, you know, hey, this abuse thing, there, that's not me. I've got dreams. I'm trying to do big things in life. And these are one of the things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be the next Oprah Winfrey or the next Bill Gates. But with that said, with your pursuit of wanting to be wealthy or wanting to be successful, does that leave room for Christ? That's the question you have to ask. For those of you who had dealt with abuse, you say that the reason why you don't know God or you don't serve him is because of the abuse. And then others of you that have not been abused and everything's been good, you say, well, you know, I don't have time to serve God right now because I'm trying to make money. And that's just real. That's reality. So you have to ask your question, what is it that you're looking for, young people? What is it that you're looking for? If you've been abused, I want to tell you right now, you serve a God, or even if you ha are not serving him, there is a God that can help you to overcome any type of abuse, whether it's abuse by the hands of a mother by the hands of a father 
or even a friend. If it's drug abuse, he can deliver you from that. Yes, you just have to believe. You have to believe that God can deliver you. So the question is, what are you searching for? In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, it says, Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye who? The Lord. While he may be what? Okay. Call ye upon him while he is near. near. Okay. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Let's ponder that for a second. You, so someone's saying, so are you telling me that there is a time where I may be able to seek God and he not be found? Yes, sir. I mean, the scripture says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And so listen, this is what I want to express to you. God is very real. He might not be sitting here next to you. You might have never had an encounter with an angel. You probably can't say that, hey, I had a near death experience and I just saw my life flash in front of me. And then all of a sudden I saw the form of a mighty angel save me from a car wreck.